Hello guys, this is the Donut Deflector, and welcome to another racing video. Today we'll be taking a look at Chicago 95, a total conversion kit for XFCE and Zubuntu alike. It does say that Zubuntu is the preferred distro, however this will work across all distributions, as long as it is running XFCE. Thanks to viewer Boris Ulyanov for showing me this, I doubt that I would have found this uh, by myself. His channel will be down in the description. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to install the icons, the window manager theme, the uh, GTK theme, as well as cursors, fonts, uh, messing around a bit with the terminal, and the light DM theme, which is what you see when you're logging in. I'll also be customizing the bar and the whisker menu in this tutorial. However, I will not be going over how to customize the Plymouth theme. That I may do in a video sometime later. First up is the GitHub page, which will be in the description. Go ahead and download the zip file. And I'm going to open up two file manager windows. Let's go ahead and get that uh, file unzipped. Alright, so let's start uh, getting the GTK themes and the icon themes and such. So I'm going to press Ctrl H to show hidden folders. And we're going to create a few folders. One called .icons, one more called .themes. Now I'm going to navigate to my Chicago 95 folder, icons, and I'm going to drag this right into icons right there. I'm also going to do the same with the themes here. Now I'm going to go to my cursors folder, and I'm going to drag all these cursors to dot icons. Let's go ahead and change those things right now. I'm going to go to the whisker menu, settings, appearance, and change this to Chicago 95. I'm also going to do the same for icons. I'm going to go next to Window Manager and get my Window Manager theme up and running. Now we're going to scroll down, go to Mouse and Touchpad, and go ahead and choose your cursor. I'm going to go with this cursor. Alright, so we already have quite a bit changed already. The next thing I'm going to do is just change the background. Of course you can use any wallpaper you want, but for the authentic feel, I'm going to change it to a solid color. So right click on your background, Desktop Settings, Style, none, under solid color. Go ahead and enter this hexadecimal, 008080. And it gives you this sort of teal looking color. Next up is installing the fonts. I'm going to go ahead and make another hidden folder in my home directory. It's going to be called .fonts. I'm going to navigate within that and make another folder called true type. Navigate within that. I'm going to go to the fonts folder here and just drag right in. All right, I'm going to open up the terminal and update my font cache. So sudo fc-cache space dash f dash v. V will print to the terminal. And I'll let that run in the background while we get other things done. Let's go ahead and change some things with our terminal. The first thing we're going to do is um, get some output te text going. So I'm going to go to extras and open up this dosrc file with a text editor. And I'm also going to go to my home folder and open up this bash.bashrc file. And I'm um, going to go ahead and copy this part and paste it right at the bottom of the .bashrc file. And now when I open up a terminal, you can see that it output puts some uh, text here. The next thing we're going to do is install our chicago95.theme which is for our XFCE terminal. So navigate to your home directory, go to .local, share, and we're going to make a few folders. The first one is XFCE4. Navigate within that one and make another one called Terminal. Go within that one and make another one called Color Schemes. And just drag that right in. And now when we open up the terminal, we're going to do a few things with it. Right click on it, go to Preferences, go to, uh, go to Colors, presets and Chicago 95. We're also going to change the terminal font. So go to appearance, change font and look for more, more look for more perfect DOS VGA or less perfect DOS VGA. I am not sure of the difference. I'm going to set the font size to 10, just make it a bit bigger and there we go. Next thing on the chopping block is to modify the panel. I'm going to right click on the panel, go to panel, panel preferences. First thing I'm going to do is change 
um, the alpha. So I'm going to appearance, right? Set the alpha to 100, and then I'm going to uncheck lock panel and move the panel down, then relock it. Next thing to modify is the clock. Right click on the clock properties, and we're gonna get rid of this date stuff. Uh, leave it on H for 24 hour time. Put it to I for um, 12 hour time. Then I'm gonna add percent P at the end just to do PM AM. Next thing to change is the whisker menu. I'm going to make a hidden folder called dot mods where I'm going to store the image file for this. Now, um, Chicago 95 does come with one already, a start button already that you can use. I'm just gonna drag it right into dot mods. However, I prefer to use uh, this one right here. Yes, Ubuntu just freaked out there. This will be in the description. And I'm going to go to home, control H, dot mods, and save it right there. All right, I'm gonna right click on my whisker menu, go to properties, click on that icon, and then go to image files, and navigate to the right place. Can use that start button. I do notice that there's some sort of glitch where the start button is much smaller than it should be, and I'm unsure how to resolve this. I've messed around with it for a while, and I couldn't figure out how. Though I did find that if I change the GTK theme back to something like Graybird, it'll automatically resize to the right. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only solution to this is just use a different GTK theme. Um, I would use Raleigh because it looks closest to that 95 look. And it does kind of remedy the issue of the start menu. Other than that, I'm unsure how to fix it. Alright, on to the next thing. We're going to go ahead and get that LightDM theme installed. All right, go ahead and navigate to your LightDM folder right there and open up this readme. Going to open up a terminal. And the first thing we're going to need to do is install this package right here. So I'm just going to copy that. sudo apt install there. I'm unsure of the package names for other distros, but I'm sure with a bit of uh, research you'll be able to find out. Next thing I'm going to do is open up this file. I'm going to use nano for this and just copy this part into it. So sudo nano and then that's and I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this to the bottom. And there we go. Next thing to do is edit this file right here and I'm gonna do the same thing with nano and what we're looking for is webkit dash theme. What we want to do is change this from default to Chicago 95. Last thing to do is go ahead and move the um, this folder into the right directory. So we're going to do sudo mv, uh, navigate to our downloads folder here, and find the Chicago folder. Um, it should be like DM, Chicago 95, and then we're going to move it to user share like DM dash webkit, and then themes. And there we go, it's moved. After restarting your computer, uh, once you log out, yes, it's derping out a bit, you'll be able to uh, log in using this which is uh, pretty cool. So that's the LightDM login thing. And there we go, there's our desktop. Anyways guys, this was uh, Chicago95. Thanks again to Boris Ulyanov for showing me this. I think it actually looks pretty nice, um, although that one problem right here is a, it's a bit annoying with the start button being way too small. But other than that, it works pretty well and is 
pretty faithful to uh, Windows 95. That's all I have for you guys today, and I'll see you guys in the next racing video.